Good evening, friends. Welcome again to another night of LifeLink, the fourth week of our study to muse or be amused. How to love God with all of our mind. Tonight, I'd invite you to join me in Psalm 77. Psalm 77. And uh, before we jump into that passage in Psalm 77, just do a little bit of review. Uh, thus far, we've established we are to muse, not be amused, right? We are to use our minds to enjoy and glorify Him, to think correctly, to think deeply, and to use them for His honor and glory. But we run into a problem because of mankind and our sin and rebellion. And because of that, we can't please God. We're in the, in the flesh, in the carnal mind, cannot please God. It's at enmity with God. But in, the, in Christ, in the gospel, and through the process of renewing our minds, we are able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We are able to defeat the mentality of thinking more highly of ourselves than we ought to think and to think soberly as God has dealt with us according to His grace and His mercies. And so we want to ask over these next couple of weeks, what are some biblical ways to um, renew our minds? What are some disciplines, what are some exercises that will help us to think correctly? What are the habits that a believer must embark upon? Remember, these are vital components um, to our accomplishing the will of God. What is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? And having our minds renewed so that our lives can be transformed. And uh, so tonight we want to start off with the habit, or the discipline, if you will, of biblical musing. Biblical musing, and specifically, biblically musing on the works of God. We're going to do it by, uh, develop this by answering three questions, trying to make it just very practical for us. First, we're going to answer the question, what does it mean to muse on the works of God? Secondly, what are the benefits of musing on the works of God? And third, how? How do I muse on the works of God? Of God. Well, join me in Psalm 77, verses 11 and 12. Psalm 77 and 11 and 12. I'll read these for us tonight. I will remember the works of the Lord. As I'm reading, just think about the terms that involve our minds. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember your wonders of old. I will also meditate on all your work and talk of your deeds. So what does it mean to muse on the works of God? Well, it very uh, simply it means to think or to think deeply about what God has done, is doing, and will do. Right? To muse, that means to think, to think deeply, to ponder, to meditate on the works of God. What are the works of God? Well, it's the things He has done, is doing, and will do. So let's develop that just a little more. To muse, to muse, and, and just see it in this passage, to think upon, to, to think deeply upon. Uh, there's at least four words here in verses 11 and 12 that speak about our minds being engaged, musing, if you will. He says in verse 11, I will remember. It's the word zakar. We get the word Zechariah from that. Zechariah, uh, the prophet in the Old Testament, means the Lord remembers. Because the verb, zakar, means to remember. And so he says, I will remember. I'm going to bring it back to my mind. And, and, and then you go into, um, um, you see that word twice, surely I will remember. And then in verse 12 he says, I also, I also will meditate on all your work. Uh, the word meditate there is the Hebrew word hagah. You almost can hear the meaning in the word, but it means to murmur. Hagaf. It just, ah, you know, it's just you're speaking over to yourself in a low or muttered voice, and implied in this is you're pondering it. You're kind of just meditating on it. You're chewing it over in your mind. You're, you're musing uh, on it. Even the next word in verse 12 can be translated meditate. Uh, it's, it's the Hebrew word sayak. Um, and, and oftentimes it is translated meditate. And again, it gives the idea of pondering it over and over again, but you're speaking about it as you're doing it. Um, 
you, you can't keep it in, so you speak about it sometimes to yourself, uh, but oftentimes as well to others. And so basically in this passage you have three, remember, remember, and meditate and meditate or talk, these three words that all involve our thinking. We must engage our mind. We, we must muse, and we must muse on the right things. And here, the object of our musing is the works of God. Again, you see it in verse 11 and 12. Uh, I will remember the works of the Lord. I will remember your wonders, things you've done. I will also meditate on all your work, talk of your deeds. Work, wonders, work, deeds. All of those speak about the works of God. And so clearly, we are to do this, to think deeply on the works of God. Well, let's take a moment as a group, just give you an opportunity to, what would be some of the things this psalmist might have meditated on? But, but maybe develop it even a little bit more. List at least five things, um, the works of the Lord, from the definition that I gave earlier, what he has done, those are the works in the past, what he is doing, that's what he's doing today, and what he will do. Remember, anything that he gives us in his word, he will perform it. And so maybe it's not accomplished yet, but it's going to be a work of God. And that's there to encourage us. So take a moment to write out, as a group, come up with at least five things God has done, five things God is doing, and five things God will do. And uh, we'll be back in just a moment. It's great just to take time to remember, right? The things God has done, is doing, and will yet to do. Uh, what, what He will yet do. And uh, ultimately, and you probably shared this among your group, but the, the greatest work where His glory was so greatly displayed was at the cross and then the empty tomb. And uh, what a blessing to just remember all the works of God. Well. Let's move on to the second question. What are the benefits of musing on the works of God? And again, we pick it right up in Psalm 77, 11 through 12 here. And notice the verse before it, verse 10. Uh, and I said, this is my anguish. In other words, Psalm 77, um, the psalmist here, it's a psalm of Asaph, and he's in anguish. He's crying out to the Lord in distress. But he says, I will remember. I will remember. And the musing on the works of God provides consolation in times of trouble. It provides that comfort and encouragement. And take the worst problem you are facing right now. And your, mind, your soul might have some distress and anguish concerning that problem. It might be wearing you down, right? Just start meditating, thinking about, thinking deeply about the works of God. And His great power, His majesty, and, and who He is as you think about what He has done, is doing, and will do. And before you know it, I believe you will be comforted. You will be comforted. And that's what happens to the psalmist. Notice verse 1 of the psalm. I cried out to God with my voice. To God with my voice, and He gave ear to me. In the day of trouble, I sought the Lord. And so he's, he was in trouble. It was a time of distress, but he seeks the Lord, and God answers. But he does not it's not just like he gets zapped in the process. He says, you know what, even as in this distress, I'm going to remember, I'm going to muse on the works of God. And that's one of the ways that God answered that prayer. So here's a second uh, encouragement or benefit. If you go to Psalm uh, 143, Psalm 143, verses uh, 4 through 6, you see something very similar. Uh, Therefore my spirit is overwhelmed within me. My heart within me is distressed. So what does the psalmist do? Verse 5 of Psalm 143, I remember the days of old. I meditate on all your works. I muse, there's our word, on the work of your hands. I spread out my hands to you. My soul longs for you like a thirsty land. What I would say to you here, the benefit, it's going to provide encouragement even to seek the Lord. Well, when you start meditating on the works of God, which are great, because He's a great God, um, 
then next thing you know, your heart will be longing for him. What is the connection, if you will? Go back to verse uh, 4. My spirit is overwhelmed within me. Right? So that's inward. Even says, my heart within me is distressed. What's the connection between verse 4 and verse 6? My soul longs for you like a thirsty land. How do you go from being distressed to longing for the Lord? Well, the answer is found in verse 5. Remember, meditate, muse on the works of God. It's a benefit. Your soul also want more of the Lord. Think about it this way. It's an illustration. It's kind of lame compared to the works of God. But have you ever noticed sports advertisements for upcoming games that they, they want you to watch? And they always show great plays from, uh, from the uh, people that will be playing in the game. They show, for example, in a golf tournament, they want you to watch the finals coming up. They're going to show you the plays from some of the players, and it's going to be great plays they had. For example, this guy just sank an 80-foot putt. And the crowd goes wild and everything. Why do they show those shots? in trying to get you to watch the next golf tournament. You know, they show the shot of the guy hitting the ball 160 or 180 yards and it lands two feet from the hole. And we're like, wow, this is amazing. Well, they show you those shots to draw you to the person. They show you the great things they have done so that you'll want to watch them, you'll want to seek them, you'll want to follow these people. Uh, imagine if they showed people golfing like the way I golf. I shoot it and it goes into the woods, right? I shoot it and it hits the sand, goes into the water. I think my ball just says, hey, wherever the water, I'm going to go find it, right? And, and, and people don't want to watch that, right? But they want to see people do great things. They're drawn to that. Well, when you start meditating on the works of the Lord, they will be great works. They will be perfect shots. They will not land two feet from the hole, they'll land in the hole. And you will want to meet with this God. You will want to be with this God. You will want to watch the works of this God. It's going to provide encouragement to seek the Lord. Meditating on the works of God is going to encourage you with that. Here's a third one, a benefit. Provides meditation, or provides motivation, sorry, provides motivation to declare God's works to the next generation. As you meditate and think about God's Word. Matter of fact, if you're struggling with witnessing, perhaps one of the things is you're just not thinking enough about the works of God. You're not thinking on the Gospel and how great it is. Because when we think about how great God is and what He has done, we, will, it, we won't be able to keep it in. We'll want to tell all others about that amazing shot we just saw. Psalm 145, verses 4 through 6, we read these words. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. I will meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works. What comes after that? And, or verse, uh, verse 6, men shall speak of the might of your awesome acts and I will declare your greatness. See, as you meditate on it, it will lead to declaring it. When you think, ponder deeply about the works of God, you will not be able to keep silent. You will desire to share them. Well, how do I muse on the works of God? Our third question for the night. Um, obviously, it involves our mind. We have to engage our mind. It involves a, a, a subject matter, the works of God. Um, so how do we do that? What are some practical ideas? Well, I've listed several of them here for you. I, I would say this, be in God's Word. Be in God's Word. Uh, hearing messages, uh, whether it's through you know coming on Sunday, being here on a Wednesday night, personal Bible reading, personal study. But but as you hear about the works of God, write them down, think on them, meditate on them, allow them to change your heart and mind. Um, you know it's very easy for us to be in a service but our mind to be wandering. It's very easy for us to open our Bibles in the morning, but really for us to, our mind to be all over the place. And so it's a, it's a battle for the mind still, but opening our Bibles, being in the service, is, is a starting point for that, to be in God's Word. I would say this, give thanks in prayer. 
it's a practical way to meditate and to think on the works of God because you're being thankful for what God has done. Another way to uh, follow up on that one is to keep a prayer diary. See God answering prayer. Wow, what a great God. Look at what he's done. Here's another practical one. It involves uh, the meeting of the believers regarding the ordinances of communion. When we gather for communion, what are we doing? Ultimately, we're remembering Christ and what he has done for us as the lamb who was slain, who had victory over the grave. And so, um, be there for communion. And then, as we're there, think, muse. It's a biblical means to apply this, musing on the greatest work of God in the gospel of Christ. Here's another one. Observe, contemplate the creation. Now, now as you do that, we're not just saying, wow, what a creation. We're understanding, for example, from Genesis 1, and just think of the different passages in Job and Isaiah where it, it speaks to God being the Creator and how great He is. And He's telling them to look at all the wonders. And so whether it's the, the intricate detail of the flower or uh, even the human eye or, or something else in creation, or it, it's the great majesty and glory of God that's displayed in the heavens on a on a um, clear uh, night, um, as you look up in the night sky and you see the stars and whatnot like that, uh, observe that, wow, what a God who's created the all power of powerfulness of God. Uh, Romans speaks about that. From creation, the indivisible attributes and works of God are clearly seen as a pr the eternal power in Godhead. Uh, another one is sing. Sing is a way to get our, our thing, but, but don't just sing anything. Sing some theologically rich songs. Sing about the works of God. That's what many of these psalms are. They're songs to be sung. Uh, participate in times of sharing testimonies. We do that oftentimes as a church on some of our Sunday evening services. But you can do that around your family dinner table. Uh, do it in a family worship time. Share testimonies. When you're doing that, what are you doing? It's because you've been thinking on the works of God, but it's going to encourage others to think on the works of God. And so participating in that means sometimes we are sharing, but it sometimes means we're listening to what God is doing in the lives of others. Uh, read some good Christian books. Uh, missionary biographies are, are you know, some of the best ones for these as well. Um, one of the things we enjoy doing, we do it more in the wintertime, but as you pick out a great missionary biography and you read a chapter of it a night to the younger kids and they enjoy it and they're thinking, wow, what a great God and how powerful He is as we serve Him. Simply, you could summarize it this way. Engage your mind and think deeply about the works of God. It's a host of ways to do it. And perhaps you've thought of some, even as we've gone tonight. And so before you, you break up for maybe your prayer time or you, you stop this lesson, maybe you just want to share some tonight. And, and that'll be the last thing you'll do in the lesson. Uh, but may God encourage you to think and to think deeply on the works of God. So if you have some other ideas that you'd like to share for how you do it in your own life, uh, take time to do that as a group. And then have a blessed rest of the night and invest, discipline your mind to muse on the works of God. Renew your mind so that we're not conformed, but we're transformed. So that we can prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We can love God with all of our minds by musing, not being amused. God bless you. Have a great evening.